The podcast that you're about to enjoy is part of the Low Tree Studios podcast network. To enjoy more great podcasts like this one, visit LowTreeStudios.com. Live from Low Tree Studios, featuring topics that serve as an informative and entertaining break from life's daily grind. This is the Jason Mini Podcast. My name is Jason. And my name is Mindy. Hello, wife. Coming up, what is the most downloaded app in the world currently? I'll reveal. Plus, I'll share how popularity affects children. I've got five ways to boost your confidence. Wacky but true news. Marriage advice from the experts. And what made people quit their jobs on the spot? And and I don't know if Mindy's had a moment like that, but hopefully we'll share our own personal moments if we have quit our jobs on the spot. And of course, Mindy is going to share... Most annoying things about moving and the things every happy marriage have in common. Nice. We got a lot of content. We might not get through it all. Just kidding. We will, but it'll be a little longer show, I'm guessing. Welcome those of you listening live on CastBox and those of you listening after the live show on your favorite podcatcher. And of course, welcome uh, Mindy on this Wednesday evening. Hello, hello. Welcome back from Florida. Yes. Went to Florida over the weekend, had a good time. It was beautiful there. Uh, first time I ever went in the beach, in the ocean, in the water uh, was this weekend. <clears throat> and it was fun. Short trip, but felt long, didn't it? Yes. Interesting how that is. Yeah. What did you enjoy most about Florida? Uh, it's just beautiful. Yeah, it's Everywhere. gorgeous Everywhere. Everywhere you look, it's just really pretty. And it was warm and we were all, you know, we were warm. So we went out there in December with uh, David and Stephanie Modal. And we're like, we got to go back in the middle of summer when everybody says you shouldn't go just so we can see what it feels like, you know, uh, as you, you know, you look into it, you're like, man, it's probably people say it's miserable there, but we didn't find it to be miserable. Yes, it's hot. Yes, it's sweaty. Uh, but it was, uh, it was beautiful and, uh, we, we did enjoy our time there the four days that we had, uh, and, uh, it, it was all pretty good. Travel was pretty, pretty flawless. Yep. Uh, Mindy did all the arrangements for the travel and the trip and she did a really good job. And, Except uh, for the yeah. uh, place we stayed, uh, one night. The first night, yeah. It, at, well, we, we, and the reason why we stayed one night near LAX is so that we could, cause we had an early flight out. So, but man, I don't know if anybody saw the pictures that Jason posted on Instagram yeah. and Facebook, but that was our view out our window. It was pretty bad. Yeah, it was. Uh, pictures it was a, were very deceiving. Uh, LA is just a dirt, dirt hole. I mean, let's be real. Uh, people think, oh, let's go to LA. I mean, there's parts of it that are, that are nice, uh, but usually they're the parts that are, you know, unreachable to the average man in, in terms of living there. Yeah. Um, but it, LA proper is just, it's just not that great. It, it's just not a beautiful area, but especially right around LAX, uh, Sadie will is in the chat said, Hey, this is how, how are we doing? We're doing great. Thanks for asking. Appreciate that. Not, not to speak from India. I think she's doing great. No, I'm doing great. I hope she's doing great. She's got a glass of wine, very tall glass. That's a, that's a generous pour. Uh, Sadie, uh, will said, I called you. Yes, uh, you did, but this is the first time we've ever seen you in our chat. We usually will only take calls from people that we uh, have seen in our chat before you, you tend to get when you do live shows, people that are going to troll and do different things. And plus we have a large amount of content to share. So we typically will not take calls at least from, for first time people that we've met. Uh, but that's okay. Thank you for, for trying to call. We just probably won't take the call uh, unless you come uh, next week and then maybe we will. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but anyway, so it was a fun trip. I enjoyed it. Yes, I did as well. So much so. Shall we say it? Say, uh, say that our intentions are to uh, move in that direction? Yes. Those are our intention. Uh, thank you for following our show, Sadie. We appreciate that. So if you come back next week, we'll take your call. How about that? We'll get to know you a little bit. Make sure you're a, you're, you're, you're a good candidate for taking a call. We have taken calls before. Uh, anyway, so yes, that is our intention to relocate from the state of California to Florida. It's an intention at this point. There's a lot of things, a lot of moving parts. Uh, it's still not a determined uh, thing we'll let everybody know when it is, but uh, the intention is there, and uh, we're heading in that direction in terms of our intention. That so is we'll correct. see what happens as the uh, the months and weeks move along. Yep, 
So, all right, let's get into our content here. My first thing, uh, the, the question is, what is, what do you think Mindy is the, uh, the most downloaded app right now currently? Most downloaded app on, on the phone? No, just app, you know, like, okay. I, I would say, you know what? Not downloaded, uh, like social media app. Let's say that social media app, social media app. How about TikTok? TikTok is number one. Yes. Yeah. I heard it on the radio the other day. Sadie said WhatsApp, uh, YouTube as well. Um, Tracy says, glad you enjoyed yourselves. Hi, Tracy. Uh, Sadie also said, not TikTok, but TikTok is the most downloaded app. According to a new study, China's video sharing app TikTok is now the most downloaded app in the world. Uh, ByteDance launched the international version of TikTok in 2017 and has since overtaken Facebook, WhatsApp, Instagram, and Facebook Messenger, all of which are Facebook owned. Wow. Facebook has their... Their, their dominance in the app world, the, the social media app world. In downloads, even in the U.S., TikTok's popularity grew during the pandemic when it became the leading download in Europe, South America, and the U.S. Mm. How about that? Uh, Sadie says, but it is restricted now. I'm not sure what you mean by that. I don't use. That's one of the apps I don't yeah, use. Yeah, we don't use it. So, yeah. I'm not sure let, what you mean by restricted. Let us know what you mean. Yeah. Hi, Diane. Next thing, raising a pop. Were you popular, you think, in, in, in uh, school? I would never say that, but I did know a lot of people. But I would never say I was popular. Like, I wasn't. I wasn't. With the um, popular kids? Yeah. Like, like, when I think of popular, I think of, like, the jocks and the mm -hmm. cheerleaders and that. They were. You, you consider them to be more think popular. Maybe popular, like knowing people, especially just meeting some of my older friends that I've had for, for over the years that knew me in high school. Tell me stories that I don't remember. Interesting. That I was more social than I think I was. Do you think that same sort of popularity thing that was in high school is a thing in the workforce? Yeah. Like, people are, have a reputation, like, is, is it a popularity thing or is it a reputation thing? What do you think that, how do you think that translates? Like that person's popular. I think it translates through how you carry yourself. If you're likable and people like being around your energy. Interesting. Okay. I like it. Well, check this out. Raising a popular kid should never be a parent's ultimate goal, but it is safe to say uh, popular kids have more friends, more connections, and probably better social lives. A study reveals a free and easy way to help your kid a bit more to become popular. Uh, send them outdoors. In the study, kids who played outdoors were more popular than other kids, and oddly, their parents were more popular too. Well, there you have it. I played outdoors all the time. So did I. Uh, indoors, <laughs> who are you meeting? Right? Who you? Who yeah. are you? Who are you networking with? If you're playing your video games, other than the video game community, nobody. But they're all over the world, so that doesn't really translate to your own little town, wherever it is that you live. So going and playing outdoors and interacting with people will contribute to your popularness. Yeah. Interesting. I like it. Uh, confidence is a thing that we all struggle with. Mm. I think. I still so, do. Yeah. So I've got uh, five ways to boost your confidence. Take note. First one, eliminate negative people from your life. Have done that. Check. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, Sadie, Will, Sadie Will says interacting people is is the way to become popular. That is, that is true. Uh, the next thing, ways to become confident, compliment others. Mm, yep. Compliment others. I do that often, actually. If I'm working with somebody that's just really doing a great job, I'll actually, even though who am I, right? Who am I? Mm -hmm. I'm just a regular person like they are. And some people are even at a higher level than me. I'll reach out to their manager and say they're just doing an amazing job. Yeah. I like uh, catching I people often. off guard by uh, complimenting something maybe about their personal self, you know, mm -hmm. maybe their attire, maybe their hair, just catch them completely off guard. <clears throat> And, yep. it, and it's, it, it works. It does work. Uh, and and it, I'm genuine about it. Of I course. I won't say something if I don't think it for, for real. But the truth is you can always find something good in someone. Absolutely. And one of the best ways to change the tide on something, let's say it's not going in the, in the, in the best direction. Maybe you start out with having maybe not the best working relationship with someone mm. um, in, in anything, not just work, but 
start to see the good that they're doing and point that out. If you, if you feed that part of it, if you water that part of it, it'll grow. So if you say, Hey man, you're doing a really good job. Thank you for doing this. Mm. They'll keep doing that. And they'll try to keep doing a better job at that. Uh, Sadie says good to everyone. The world will be good to you. Yes, that is true. See the good. I agree with that. That's uh, another way of saying karma. That is true. Uh, the next thing to boost your confidence, feed your brain with knowledge and stimulate it every day. Mm. Interesting. I mm -hmm. like that. And then the last thing, which is kind of what Mindy said, uh, help someone every day. Giving a compliment, I think, does help people. Yes. So that is a nice thing. All right. And that's how you boost your confidence. Take note. Uh, and if you missed all that, just, just rewind it. You know, <laughs> we're going to move on though to wacky, but true news. <laughs> So some irony here. Check this out. A Chevy Silverado being driven by a 51-year-old man crashed right into the front windows of a farmer's insurance agency <laughs> nice. in Michigan. Uh, incredibly, even though the agency was open with workers inside, nobody uh, was injured. Wow. They were all taking Lucky. a poop or something. I don't think they were doing that, but... Sadie says, see you next time. It was a great podcast. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. We were 10 minutes in. <laughs> yeah, we got much more, but thank you very much. You have a, you have a good evening. Uh, next thing, shoppers were startled last weekend to see a bear cub br browsing uh, the offerings at a Los Angeles supermarket after sniffing around inside the bear eventually walked out the front doors. The California Department of Fish and Wildlife found the 120-pound animal hiding under a trailer at a construction site behind the nearby Walmart. At the Walmart, uh, the bear was tranquilized and killed. Aww. And then they they made uh, they made house shoes out of him. Okay, that's not really... They made, they made yeah, they made slippers. It's not... And a, really and a wallet. That's not true. It was, it was tranquilized and released into the Angeles National... Why did you say kill? <laughs> You're horrible. <laughs> Uh, a delivery driver was stopped at a roadblock in South Africa. South Africa. Uh-oh. Getting a call. I thought I shut that off. I don't know. I it's did. from Elk Grove, California. We should have we answered it, even though they can't hear us. Uh, anyway, a delivery driver was stopped at a roadblock in South Africa. I tried to repeat the way that I did it before. <laughs> and officers were shocked the driver had an amputated left leg. Oh, boy. The man had his 11-year-old son sitting next to him and would tell him when to press the clutch so he could change a gear. Oh, uh, the man was given a ticket and told not to drive anymore because you don't have a leg. <laughs> right. <laughs> you should not be driving. Wow. <laughs> a woman in New Zealand loves houseplants, a Beth McCurcher has a collection of around 700. McCarcher says, my husband calls me a hoarder, I would rather say obsessed. Mm. McCarcher sells plants online to fund plant food and the purchase of any plants she doesn't already have. David says, hola. Hola, David. Hola, how are you? Yo, 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 ho, yo, hoes, yo, hoes, a whole life for me. <laughs> wow. Well, Right? Oh, no. No, I don't think that's... That would have been good. Uh, I got to come up. Like, I, I think something Stephanie better. probably said it that way, but... She's like, yo, hoes. She said, yo, hoes. Yo, hoes. <laughs> and that's, uh, that is our, our wacky but true news. Moving on to entertainment news now. It's entertainment news with Mindy. You're gonna get yourself some entertainment news. Mindy? We'll see how this goes. I literally threw my podcast together in about five minutes. So it's gonna suck, everybody. <laughs> 
Kit Harrington says he's had suicidal thoughts due to his Game of Thrones fame. Yep. The actor told London's uh, Sunday Times things that have happened to me since Thrones ended and that were happening during Thrones were a pretty traumatic nature, and they did include alcohol. Harrington says when he hit rock bottom battling depression and alcohol addiction, he uh, checked himself into a hundred and thirty two thousand dollar per month connecticut rehab facility harrington has now been sober two and a half years and is feeling great and he has a he and his wife rose Mm -hmm. are parents life is wonderful he said i have a child and my relationship is brilliant she was the girl in uh game of thrones she's the one that said you know nothing Jon snow he's married to her yeah the I'll redhead. Begin. Nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I didn't. I, I wouldn't have thought. Anyway, yeah. less than two years after becoming the first '80s video to hit one billion views on YouTube, Guns N' Roses' iconic "Sweet Child of Mine" has now reached one billion streams Dang. on Spotify. Wow! The 1987 track now joins Spotify's Billions Club, along with other rock anthems such as Nirvana's "Smells Like Teen Spirit," Linkin Park's. In the end, Journey, Don't Stop Believing, which mm, is Diane's yeah, of favorite course. song. Yeah, that's a that's a popular one. And lastly, Queen's Bohemian Rhapsody. Which I fucking hate that song. And more. <laughs> oh, God, I hate that song. <laughs> and lastly, your box office. James Gunn's The Suicide Squad didn't exactly light the box office in its first weekend with just $26.5 million. Of course, it also released simultaneously on HBO Max, so there was no need to see it in theaters. Right. Jungle Cruise dropped to second to bring in 15.69 million, hmm. rounding out the top five old, old. Hmm. Now we want to yeah, see that Yeah, that's that one that's on the beach, right? Where uh-huh. they, get, they get old in like 20 minutes or some shit. Yeah, Black Widow and Stillwater. Suicide Squad released in 2016. Debuted with... A, <laughs> did, did I say it right? Almost did. You, you said debuted. It's <laughs> debuted. <laughs> Fuck that word. <laughs> Fuck that word. <laughs> uh, with 135 million weekend. One year ago this week, the number one movie was The Tax Collector, mm. a crime thriller starring uh, Shia... Labo? Shia, 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 Shia? Shia LaBeouf. All right, fuck that name too. Yeah. And George Lopez. With most cinemas still closed, the film scored the top spot with 316. Wow, in sales. 316. Okay, you're running out of your song. Five years ago, Suicide Squad. Ten years ago, Rise of Planet of the Apes. Twenty years ago, this week, Rush Hour Two. Nice. <laughs> almost made it. <laughs> you almost did. <laughs> Damn. All right, it. let's move on to this. Hey, baby, you know the time has come for you to answer the question. The question of the podcast is coming your way real, real fast. Yeah, baby, you know the time has come for you to answer the question. All right, question of the podcast is this. Uh, mm. I haven't even thought about this answer. Oh. Oh, I got it. I got it. I I remember it. I don't know exactly what it was. We'll say the question. All right, so question is, what's the worst gift you've ever received and ever given? Mm. Mm. I got got the given one. Everybody knows this story. Who's ever listened to us (laughs) knows this story. I'm not even going to go into it because it's been told so many times, but I will say what it is. All right. So I'll go, I'll go first. Worst gift I've ever been given was every gift given to me by my grandma Bailey. (laughs) She was a horrible gift giver. (laughs) Like I would, we would, we would open our gifts and go, does she even know us? Right. That's horrible. Like every Christmas we never wanted gifts from her. Best gifts were my grandma Galbraith. She always gave the grandkids the best gifts Mm. forever, always. Nice. I like that. Um, What's your best gift? Best gift? Oh, my gosh. It's probably one from you. I'm trying to think of which one. Um, Wow. Think on it. I'll say my worst. Well, wait a minute. Best gift ever given, I have to say, was my puppy May Lee. Oh, by your ex husband. <laughs> yeah. Fucking really? Yeah. 
After 24 years, <laughs> yeah. I still haven't beat that. No, I would say, but right there with that would be the ring you gave me that I married you that with. Was a, that's not a gift, though. That's an engagement ring. Well, whatever. I'm trying to give you credit here. I've given you a lot of fucking great oh gifts. Oh, my gosh. I, I know, but I'm like on the spot here. So, but I, you know. Well, here's a gift I gave you. <laughs> that we returned the next day. <laughs> the car. A Prius. <laughs> Toyota Prius. The worst gift. Turned it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the next day. Who's ever returned a car? I Jason have. has. Me. I think the worst gift I've ever given was probably like a gift card that I got that I was like. And you re-gifted. I re-gifted yeah. it because it's like. You know, I probably was in a pinch and I was like, okay, that'll work. Hell with it. Right. I know I've done that. Yep. I have to say I've done that. All right. Well, let's get into what the uh, folks on Facebook have said. And, unless anybody wants to chime in in the chat, you probably already replied though, probably. Did you just you. burp into the I microphone? did, but I did it really under the radar. Everybody heard that. No, it sounded like a breath. Tina said, worst gift received years ago, my mother-in-law gave me a velour long-sleeved blouse with the statue of David all over it for Christmas. Oh, what <laughs> kind of gift is that? <laughs> Sounds like something your grandma would do. So basically a bunch of... So David Modell on a sweater. <laughs> well, she said, so basically a bunch <laughs> of penises all over oh, the God. thing. Yeah. What is the statue? That's of pretty funny. I, that's a, I, I don't I know. Have apparently to look that it's up. a statue with a penis. It was hideous too. All these different colors. Ugh. Just ugh. Her very eccentric sister was in town and Xmas shopping with her at Dillard's. She paid a lot for it. I gave it to my sister who thought it was pretty. And then uh, my mom, mother in law, God rest her soul, had great taste. So interesting. And then she said, worst gift given? I guess someone who received said gift. <laughs> uh -huh, she transferred it. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. um, Carol said, I, I gift I gave to Peyton, which is my niece. It was a dress. And when I bought it, I thought it was cute. But when I got ready to send it, I thought, why did I buy that? Mm. I don't think That's I ever conscious. got a, a comment, but I also don't think she ever wore it, thankfully. <laughs> You're that, she's that aunt. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Or, yeah, well, it would be aunt, yeah. Mm -hmm. And she says, I'm sure there was uh, something in the past, but nothing uh, stands out. So basically it was that. Gotcha. Rodney said, I gave my young girlfriend, wife-to-be, the newly released Creedence Clearwater Revival album for her birthday. She looked at it, threw it back at me, and said, I don't like them. <laughs> wow, that's honesty. <laughs> Rodney Squires. Yeah. I guess that's the worst gift I ever gave, but the best I ever got because I kept the album. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good story. Nice. I like that. And then Angie says... The worst gift I ever gave was to dad. I was like 19 and kind oh, of this is funny <laughs> and kind of forgot it was his birthday and not much was open. So went to Rite Aid or something like that and bought starter logs for a fire. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> he looked at them and said, thanks. I think they eventually got used. I don't ever, I don't think. Oh my God. That is so funny. I ever received a bad one. Season. Starter log. My dad, I could totally see his face to this. When she said that, I was like, oh my God. That's funny. So funny. <laughs> um, I think I got one more comment and it was from Belle. She said knives. She gave knives. This is bad luck. Is it? Yeah, it is considered bad luck. Oh, I don't know. I didn't have, never heard that before. I'd, if you got some really good knives, though, that's not bad. I think you received knives once, didn't you? Didn't you? Because you put it on your list, and my dad bought them for yeah. us. I think. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it's different if you ask yeah. for them, but like. All right. I didn't know it was even bad luck. Yeah, if you give a gift of knives and they didn't ask for it, it might be bad luck. Wayne said, "Can't even, can't think of any bad gifts." Uh, I only get gold. He says, I guess I've gotten clothes from people who clearly don't know what I wear. Yeah, that's my that was my grandma, man. I mean, I get this sweater and I'm like, dude, I'm never wearing this. I think even as an adult, I got a sweater and I was like, I'm never wearing, I never wore it. Yeah, ever. I think I probably have gotten a few yeah. items like that. I'm yeah. sure of it. I just get these funky, weird socks for Christmas. From people? Yeah, but and I always think, okay, it's kind of cool, but I never end up wearing them. Hmm. So I don't know if it's a bad gift, but it's kind of like one I 
Well, if it's a gift, if it's a gift you don't use, then it's a bad gift. Yeah. If it's something so. you never ever use, you're like, eh. that's kind of lame. Yeah. Uh-huh. You know. Uh, all right. Well, that's cool. Uh, the question of the podcast for listener participation for next Wednesday is: What would you try if you had no fear? Ooh. Man. Yeah. I try to move. If I had no fear, I might. Well, what are we answering it for? (laughs) Here you go. (laughs) Post it. Minnie will post it and you can respond or you can respond right here in the chat. But if she posts it, she'll do it on Facebook, the Jason and Mindy Facebook page, the Low Low Tree Studios. Do you do it on all those too? Yes, I do. And then she does it on her own page as well. If you're friends with her, you can respond and we'll talk about it on next Wednesday's show. Mindy, what you got? I got most annoying things about moving. Ooh, let's talk about it. Can we try to guess some? Yes. Um, first of all, though, a study of 2,000 adults who recently moved found more than a third claimed it was one of the most stressful it is. events of their life. Mm-hmm. And 22% were put off from ever moving again. And the most annoying things about moving, according to the survey, are... Can you guess any? Oh. Chat, you can respond. You know what? I'm not going to try to guess any, but I'm going to I'm gonna talk about our our la- last move. I haven't... I've moved... My parents moved a lot, but, you know, I was a kid, so it didn't matter. Uh, you and I haven't moved a lot, really. We've... We, we mm-hmm. moved into... I helped you move your shit, all the shit you had, into our first house... Um, and then all I had was a very, a little amount. I was very young. I lived with my parents. So I didn't have much. I just had my bed, my drum set, my clothes, dresser, not much. So that was easy for me. It was, it was shitty moving you cause you had so much stuff store, a storage <laughs> facility full of it. So we stayed in that house for a long time, 15 years. Yes. Uh, and then we moved and that sucked. It, it, I don't, it, it, it's one of those things like, I think it's one of those things like, and I, I know this is a dumb comparison, so please slap me if you think it is, but I don't know how women have a, have a child and then want to have another child. Like, I think they forget how painful it was. Right. Uh, I've, I've actually kind of forgotten at this point, almost 10 years of living here. What how, moving was like? How painful it really was. Yeah. But if I hearken back a little bit, it was... <laughs> It was pretty painful. We had a huge, huge uh, U-Haul. Yeah. And filled it. What, we twice? filled it three times. Oh, three. I'm Not sorry. filled three times. It filled twice and then kind of partially, you was know, in a, little, a, a, little a third this, a of little it. That. Yeah. Uh, it sucked. Yeah. Um, We're going to need a semi. <laughs> shit. <laughs> uh, Stephanie says the furniture. Mm. The furniture. Yeah, that's on here. Um, the furniture, they say, being able to um, fit furniture through the door. That is huge. This house was amazing because this house has a huge slider. Yes. And it made moving so easy. We were able to get the everything in without any problem. Not yeah. one thing was a problem here. Uh, Stephanie said this, and I agree with her 1,000%, and it's what we will do also. She says, if David and I ever move, we would save our marriage and get movers. Hell to the yes. Yes. <laughs> you still got to pack your own shit, though, you yeah. know, so that part make sure of it. it's protected yeah. because they're not that great. My mom did that and lost a lot of valuable mm. valuables because they were not careful. Correct. Well, let's go through your list. Organizing services like electricity, Internet, yes. all that stuff. Yeah, you have to you have to cancel everything you have, then organize it back. Yep, and there's always usually a layover in Uh it because if you're in this weird place where you've moved already and you still need to keep it, like we were renting our house for a while, so we had to keep all of that on until uh, people came in there. Yeah, yeah. So that was really odd. That was an odd one. We were double paying. Mm -hmm. Spending lots of time packing. Packing, yep. You got to start really far in advance so you're not doing it in a rush. Ooh, redirecting the mail. That's another. Oh yeah, that's a really annoying one. Yeah. Yes, because then you always have to You're pick still up mail at get the other place. Fucking mail, dude. Yeah. Raining on moving day. I've never had that happen. No, no, no. It doesn't rain in California, so we've never had that. It happen. might in Florida. Though. <laughs> it might in Florida. The new home being dirty. 
Yeah. Oh, that was one thing. When we started to move, because you, you only clean the areas where there's open space. Right. Like under your couches, couches behind your refrigerator, yeah. behind your, you know, whatever else you it's have. Like, oh, God, we are dirty. We, yeah. When we were moving, I remember uh, our, your good friend, Don Parra, was helping us. And he was like, <laughs> he made a comment about, whoa. Dirty back here. <laughs> like, yeah, well, we haven't been back there in yeah. 10 years, 15 oh, years. Done. <laughs> uh, the new home being dirty. Okay, we talked about that. Waiting for internet to be installed. Uh, if it needs to be, why would it need to be? Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, I'm not sure. I'd get that shit done right away. Having to clean my old home, which we just kind of yep. talked about. Being unable to fit the furniture. We talked about that. Not having blinds or curtains to begin mm. with in this house did was not. Great. No, well, those big picture the windows. The big ones, but the rest of the house has these shutters, which yeah. is amazing. Um, and the last one is noisy neighbors and interesting, interestingly, having to lift heavy things came in at 11, not even at the top 10. Right. And that's if you're moving by, if you're lifting all of it. So I... Like Stephanie mentioned, you know, we will have movers and they'll move all that shit for us. I'm not touching that shit. Yeah. Uh, but you have to unpack. I would say unpacking. No, I enjoy unpacking. Living out of a fucking box for for, for three months. Well, that would suck. But I do un un enjoy unpacking because it's kind of like I get to reset up the whole house. That's again. true. That is kind of fun. I think that's fun. Yeah. All right, next. Next. I have the things every happy marriage have in common. Mm, that's fine now. They share at least one hobby. Okay, well, what's ours? Uh, podcasting. Yes. Ding, ding. Good qu Good answer. <laughs> They're cool with spending time apart. Absolutely. Uh, 100%. Bye, Jason. When are you go in tennis? <laughs> yeah. Uh, they figure out the best ways to split up the chores. Absolutely, yep. we do. Got to do that. They have sex, even if they aren't raring to go at it. Yeah, that's true. Absolutely. Yeah. And they touch each other every day. Yes, I think we do. I, I agree. That's a really good list. We're hitting all that. Hopefully, mm -hmm. you happy married people are doing the same. If you're unhappy, Start try, doing some, them. try some of that shit. They have a video game strategy. 76% of couples uh, report playing video games together hmm. was good for their marriage. No, we're, we don't hit that one at all. I don't all. play video games. No. We play board games, though. We do. Maybe that counts. Yeah. They respect one another's fighting styles. Uh, we fight pretty good. We're hard fighters. We're actually way better now, man, than we used to be. Oh, we, we went through the entire trip to Florida without one argument. Without one argument. Yep. That's impressive for us. <laughs> I will say. Because travel's stressful, you know, and, yeah. and, and, and that kind of stuff makes it tense. I think you just get better. I think we've had, we only had one bad moment and it was because I wasn't feeling well. It was our last meal. We ate at this place called The Roadhouse. Uh -huh. uh, and weirdly enough, as we were eating there, I... I was order. I ordered the food and I was so looking forward to I think it. The fish tacos cut yeah. caught up to you from the night before. No, it was the day before. It was the same day. It was the same day, not the night before. Mm. It was the same day. We went to that. Uh, as Stephanie and David would know. We went to this place called Grills. Uh, it was right. It's right on the river. Beautiful place. But I had fish tacos, and then like later that night, I just felt. And then the next day, when we, which I'm really grateful, the next day when we got home, this is graphic. I apologize, but I had. Some some poo issues. I'm so glad that didn't happen on the airplane. Oh my god! So glad. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, okay. So the la last two, they want to be healthy, mm. and they forgo social media. Yeah, I think that's. I let go of Facebook for a while, and I've let it enter back into my life, and I feel like I need to let it go again. Mm. I feel like I just I just was happier when I wasn't looking at Facebook, wah, but. Wah, wah. Anyway, I think I should just let it go forever, you know, just fuck it. It has been a nice way of keeping in touch with people though. Um, so, but, and that's it for you. Yep. All that's right, well, it. let's get into fun facts. All right. My first fun fact is this, an, on, an average of 1400 people are injured each year playing ping pong. Hmm. 1400 people injured playing ping pong. That's kind of weird. Yes. The Four Penny Coffin was one of the first homeless shelters created for the people of central London by the Salvation Army during the late 19th century and early 20th centuries. For four pennies, they received food, 
and shelter, and they could sleep in a coffin-shaped wooden box with a tarp. No thanks. Uh, according to some very important research, the liquor most likely to cause hangover is brandy, followed by red wine, mm-hmm. and rum. Rum. Wow. Yes, yes, yes. Bummer. Due to its remoteness in the Amazon and virtually constant dense cloud cover, Brazil's tallest mountain at 2,994 meters above sea level, Nablina Peak, remained undiscovered until the 1950s. Oh, that's so weird. Mm-hmm. Uh, Friday kind of guy says, well, injur- injury involving a ping pong paddle. They have to say they were playing ping pong. True. They got injured, exactly. They were probably beating each other. Wayne says, because of the sugar, maybe, in those drinks is why they cause oh, absolutely. a hangover. And, and those, the tannins. And the tannins. And those are your fun facts. So Mindy had uh, kind of some marriage facts to share, like, the, the, you know, what, 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 what happy couples share in common and mm-hmm. stuff like that. I've got marriage advice from the experts. I don't know who these experts are. Uh, fatherly, I don't know what that is, also asked a variety of therapists for one piece of marriage advice they think is most important. Do you have any? Maybe it hits this list. Well, it always the... We've done a lot of marriage type stuff, so communication. I don't think communication is the most important thing. You don't? I think some I think sometimes we over communicate. Yeah. I don't think you need to say everything. No. I, I know that when I was younger, I felt like we had to talk every fucking thing out. Yeah, we did. And it was And now stupid. it's like why? Yeah, because it, I, I half the time I don't even acknowledge you. It's a bad moment. Just let it go. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Seriously. Yeah. Oh, let's talk about this. No, you don't have to talk about it. Yeah. You can just go, hey, we just had a bad moment. Let's just not let talk it about it. Let's not waste our energy on it. So I don't think people say communication. I don't think that's that's the best one. No. I have some pretty good advice, but we'll go through uh, these. What we can Sex offer. Sex wasn't on more. there? Sex is good. It's good advice. I agree. You don't have to put so much emphasis on no. it. No. But making sure that you get it in at least once a week, I think is very important. Um, go ahead. Give me one. First thing, be vulnerable. Yeah. Whenever you're sad, angry, scared, or lonely, share your feelings. Be specific about what you feel, why you feel the way you feel. Uh, By doing so, you open a door for genuine connection. It gives your spouse an opportunity to step up, to be there for you, to get through uh, to get you I mean, through something I would together. call that honesty. Just being yeah. honest with each other because that has caused a lot of fights in our past because we weren't honest about things. What not, do you mean? Not, and I don't mean like big things, but just being honest about the, maybe yeah, the way we were right. feeling like, towards something. Like you compromise and you don't Yourself. and you shouldn't have, right? right? You, you You should be like, no, I really don't want to do this. It causes resentment. Yeah, that's good. Good point. Fix. Uh, when something's not working, fix it. Don't throw it away. That's good advice. Uh, that's one of my actual personal advice that I that I like to give to people is uh, honor your commitment. Yeah, you made it. You said you were going to commit, so honor that. And 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 instead of looking for an escape r- route, turn to the other person. But anyway, fix. Uh, one of the reasons why marriages break down and end up in divorce is that couples easily give up on their relationship. Exactly what I was just saying. No marriage is perfect and there will be 101 reasons to give up. Oh, yeah. But if you want your marriage to work, always look for a way to fix things instead of just throwing them away. I yeah. like that. Uh, the little things are the big things, Mindy. Remember the small things that make a big difference. Little things that you did at the beginning that gobbled up in living that what get get gobbled up in living together familiar familiar familiarity that's such a tough word (laughs) familiarity familiarity even though they matter more in marriage say please thank you excuse me smile at simple times like when you're driving someplace together or when watching tv touch each other like with a light touch of the hand at dinner we just mentioned that 
I think uh, one of the big things like recently, like, you know, we've been going through some stressful things. I think just being present Mm -hmm. in those moments, maybe saying a little something that you acknowledge that, hey, you know, I, I get it. We're going through stuff. Yep. I like it. That's good. Checking in and stuff like that too. Uh, Resist falling into set roles. Uh, Even if you do divvy up or some responsibilities, it's kind of weird because it corresponds with your list a little bit. Uh, It is still important that both of you develop all of the domestic and business skills necessary to take care of your family and run a household just as you would if you were single. That's call, a good point. I call it domesticated bullshit. There's a couple things I don't do, but I have done, you know, in the past, Mindy and I used to do our bills together. Um, oh, there's another one more. Uh, I used to do our bills together, and uh, it, but but she's taken on the role primarily, and uh, which is fine. So I'm not really involved in that. And the other thing I'm not involved with is la- is is laundry. Yeah. That I don't do. I'm not involved in dishes. You're, well, a little bit you are, though. Eh, not really. Yeah, I actually, that's not true. Not really. Yeah, you put them in the sink. <laughs> and then I transfer them from the sink to the dishwasher, which is to- literally an arm movement. <laughs> so, whoop, there it is. I help. What do you want? <laughs> and then the last thing, learn the art of apologizing when you've said something rude or thre- or, tr- or treated your partner badly. Take notice and apologize genuinely as quickly as possible. It's great to clarify the reason for your behavior. Uh, I, I like that. Uh, also, when when you when someone does, I'll say this because this is something that that we often don't do. Uh, acknowledge the apology. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Like I said something wrong and then I apologize and then I get nothing. And it's like, hang on a minute. Does that apology have mean shit? <laughs> give me something. Give me something. I'm getting re- there. I'm give getting me a, there. Give me a, it's okay. I get it. Something. I, I usually do. Mm. I think you're Sometimes talking. you do not. Well, you know, it takes me a minute. When you make me, when you piss me off, it takes me a minute. What do you want? I want you to say, okay, I realize that you apologize. I usually do. I'll say, okay, and that's about it. All right. Have you ever quit your job on the spot? Ooh. Um, Any job. and it, it, one, one experience. I have. I have a good one. I don't think I have. I've been fired. As a matter of fact, my friend Tracy, who I'm not sure is still in the chat, we both got fired at the <clears throat> same time pretty much. For for fighting or what'd you do? Um, no, I don't really remember. She might, but... Yeah, I, I probably partied too much and came in too late all the time. I think that's what my was over. I'm not sure <laughs> what what hers was, but I've nev- we lived together, had jobs, and got fired together. I've never been fired from a job, Mindy. I <laughs> know you haven't. Never. Mm. So have uh, you walked away though? I know you walked away. Oh, here's my wa- here's my walk away story. Uh, I worked at Target with Mindy um, and Lowe's was opening up in the same parking lot and they had this mass hiring, right, of people. Mm -hmm. So uh, one of the people that we knew got a job over there and said, you guys should come over here and apply. There's a lot of jobs, a lot of jobs. So we were like, okay, we went over there, we applied, we interviewed, we both got offers the same day. First of all, now let me explain Target. I worked with my best friend. His, his, his name is Ray. Not my best friend anymore, but at the time he was. And we had a great time working together. We would bullshit and have fun, and we were very productive. We were good at our jobs. Uh, but we got we got, um, we got got split up because the manager, f- fucking, what's her name? Terry, I think her name was. What was her name? Terry? I don't think it was Terry. Julie? Oh, uh, it might have been Julie. No, I don't know. Tammy. 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 That's it. She works at Costco now, right? She does. I saw her. Uh That bitch. Um, She split us up because she was like, you guys are just too chummy. She did, what, what, what managers think is chummy equals you're not working. Yeah. And we were working. Okay. We were young guys. We were good at it. We were stocking the floors and stuff. So she split us up. We were pissed about it. And it was happening all around the same time. We interviewed... Uh, We got the job offers. Both him and I put a letter of resignation in her fucking mailbox and (laughs) did not return the next day. (laughs) Started our new job. I was, 
I loved it. <laughs> and she was so pissed. You remember, because uh, you still work there. She's like, where'd yeah. Jason go? They were pissed. One job that I wanted to just leave was the last one I had. I still gave him my two weeks, but I wanted to just not come back in. Yeah. Yeah, that's tough. Uh, let's see. Uh, Friday kind of guy says, I don't know if you want something from the person when you say sorry, then I don't think you are ready to truly say sorry. That's true. Give them a minute. But man, if you've really given them a heartfelt apology, <laughs> when you get nothing, it's like, what the, f then what's the, what does it mean then? What is, what is an apology? Does it have any value? If, if you devalue apologies, then, then that is, then that, then that's not good. Yeah. Yeah. Suck it up and say, oh, okay, you're, I'm, I, you can say something like this, at least give a response and go, I, I know you said it, you're, I'm, I'm sorry and I will get over it, but I'm a little upset right now, but I will get over we've, it. We've Thank you that. for your apology. We've done that. Um, David says, and I walk away. And I walk Keanu away. Voice. I don't have a can. And I walk away. Is that it? And I walk away. I think that's it. <laughs> uh, Friday kind of guy says, stocking the floors, but not the shelves. You know what I mean. <laughs> Maybe not. They, they, some they, shit does they go may on have the, never worked in well, retail. Well, some shit does go on the floor. Have you worked at Lowe's? <laughs> yes, that's true. You do true. put shit on the floor. Um. Anyway, let's yeah, move on. Move on. These are, but this is those are our stories, but I have some other people's stories of how they quit their jobs. Oh, nice. A uh, topic. What made you quit your job on the spot? As a teenager, here's one. As a teenager at a new job, I got my hand smacked by the owner the first day because I was writing with my left hand. Uh, that person walked out. Oh, hell Fuck no. That. I'm Somebody out of here. smacking your hand. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um, let's Abuse. see. Abuse. Next one. Uh, I get a job at a restaurant. First day I showed up and the heat is broken in the dead of winter. It was like 35 degrees. I ask the cooks if it's always like this and they say, yes, I walked immediately. Uh, I actually have an, another quit story. I worked at Six Flags Magic Mountain for one day. Fucking hated it. I never came back. I think I might have quit that one as well. Yeah. I think one day. I, I because I worked there too, and I I think I quit. It was just too much. David said the owner would have gotten punched. He's referring to the uh, mm -hmm. hand slapping. Yes. Next one, being hard to sell cars. Then in the middle of training, I got pulled aside and told I'm being moved to lot attendant. The position paid minimum wage, and I didn't even get a chance to be the, on the sales floor. Left and it never went back. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I bet you Stephanie's got some stories. I don't know that girl's walked off a few times. Probably does. The boss just made it where the whole front office has to text her so she can change our thermostats for us. Uh, we've had control over our thermostats for the last 10 to 15 years. The kicker is 85% of the time she is not in the office. Mm. Uh, haven't quit yet, though. Person didn't quit yet. And the last one, there's a few more, but we'll do one more. Uh, this person was offered health care when asked about filling out forms the next day. They pulled health care from my package. Oh, yeah. Person immediately left. <laughs> yeah, I would probably leave too. Yeah, don't do that. Who doesn't do, yeah, who doesn't have health care? Who doesn't have health care? I mean, I'm not talking about like, some do, some don't. Yeah, but small we're businesses. We're talking about at the level that we work at right now. Small businesses. Most places don't. have health care. Exactly. Let's move on. This is your water cooler question. Uh, everyone has everyone has one, Mindy. It weighs around twenty nine pounds. What is it? Everyone has one. It weighs about twenty nine pounds. My boobs. Everyone oh, has yeah. one. Oh no, everyone doesn't have mm. one. Though. Okay, so how about your head? Is that your final answer? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Friday kind of guy says stomach. Wayne says head, 29 pounds, really? Well, I'm thinking that's the heaviest part. That's but a big fucking head, may man. Maybe your ass? Uh, David says, oh, I love head. <laughs> Shut up, David. Did you say your ass? Yeah. Everybody huh? has a 29-pound ass? <laughs> no, they don't, do they? There's some skinny people. Stephanie says in, intestines. Mm. Intestines. Anybody else? Uh, 
Well, what else is heavy? Freaky kind of guy thinks that Stephanie has it. How about your skin? Stephanie says the human head weighs eight pounds. So eight pounds, put it into perspective, folks. Eight pounds. Everyone has one, has it, it. Skeleton system? (laughs) I don't know. It is your skeleton. Ah, I did get it last. 29 pounds. So if you are 300 pounds, think about it. (laughs) Only 29 of it is your skeleton. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh-huh. I sounded like Bob. Ah. Uh-huh. Uh, fr- uh, Friday. I love that Friday kind of guy. I'm a Friday kind of guy as well. I think you know, I like yeah, Fridays. Yeah, you are. Uh, he he says uh, egos and ass assholes. Everyone's got one. That's true. That's mm-hmm. a great point. Ready for your... Hopefully. <laughs> you have an asshole, at least. Yes, I'm ready for that. I the... hope everyone has one of those, too. Mm-hmm. All right. Ready for your random question? I am. This is super simple, but kind of complicated, if you think about it. Hmm. What are you bored of? Oh, that's good. Right? It's short, sweet, simple, but think about it. What are you bored of? I can tell you right now. Go for it. I'm bored of this whole COVID thing. Mm. I'm done with it. You're done hearing about I'm it. I'm done hearing about it. We know it exists. Stop I just talking fucking want to live my life at this point. They talk about it every every day, every hour, every news station, every. It's at work. It's everywhere. I'm over it. I'm bored. That's good. That's a really good one. Mm. Dang, I can't compete with that. Yeah. What am I bored of? David said that dick because at one point everyone has one from a certain point of view. What? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) At some point, right? (laughs) It's either you have one or one is inside of you. (laughs) Oh, my God. Shut up, David. (laughs) David's the one that does it, right? And and Mama 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 Galbraith, Paula Galbraith, is is the one that pointed that out. That David's the one that brings up all the dirty shit all the time. <laughs> and it's true. Okay, what am I bored of? Oh, I know. I hate. I don't want to be this guy, and I'm I'm not going to be this person. But you're going to be. I am right now in this moment because you're asking the question, mm-hmm. but I'm not going to be this person. This is this person that I, okay, there's people that I love that do this and I, I don't like it. Let me give you an example. Let me give you a, for instance, when we stayed in the LAX hotel mm. and I took a picture of the homeless encampment view from our window and I posted on the socials and made some snarky comment. Someone that I know who moved to Las Vegas said, I'm so glad I left that shithole or something like that. Uh You live in Las Vegas, bro. (laughs) I was just at Fremont Street. Looks just like LA. It sure does. (laughs) I saw that. Okay, I'm I'm, I'm giving that that fella a hard time. Doesn't listen, so it's fine. But we love him. I love him. But I'm not going to be that guy. You guys would debate. The, and you know what guy I'm talking about? The guy that says, I'm so glad I left California. Yeah. I'm so glad. I hate that shit. Bugs me. But I will say, I'm getting bored of California. Mm. I am. All right. All right. And it's weird because I never thought I would be. Yeah, me neither. me neither. Never thought I would be. I don't think we're bored of California. It's the uh, things about California that are not only concerning, but I'm being bored of it. Well, you you can answer it how you want. I am I'm a little bored. Mm-hmm. Bo- California is beautiful. It's got a lot of fun shit to do. So it's really hard to be bored here, uh, especially the way we live our lives. We like to go and travel and camp and do all that shit. You can't get bored here if you if you do stuff like that. Um, but y- yeah, I'm just I'm just kind of burn out on it. I guess mm. that's a better way of saying it. Let's get into the chat. They're saying some funny shit. Well, here. Friday kind of guy said, yeah, David is right. A clit is just 
a not formed penis. Mm-hmm. True science it's, fact. It's true. Yeah. It is true. That's kind of gross when you think about it. Uh, David said, Friday or a woman, Friday or a woman has one in, th- what? Okay. Oh, he's talking to Friday. That, then that's what I was saying. Or that's, a woman has one in them. Yeah, that's what I said. That's what I said. <laughs> It's David's joke that I translated. Uh, <laughs> Friday says, can we just grind up all the old people and homeless? Oh, God, that's mean. And dog food. Yeah, but you know what? I, I said something on our trip with that I will not repeat here because I'll probably get in trouble for it. Mm-hmm. But um, I said something kind of close to that, if you remember. What, I don't remember. What I would do to the, those yeah, people. Yeah, that was fucked up. <laughs> I remember now. If I was in charge. That's dictatorship, Mindy. You don't do that. <laughs> I don't know what you do about it. I, I You know, it's funny. Because I, nobody I'm does. I'm not going to sit here and say. It's a problem. I'm not going to sit here and go. Uh, be, I'm not, I don't want to be one of those people that's going to complain about it. <laughs> because I really don't have a solution. I don't know what you do about it. I don't know what you do. nobody does. So I know what to do about it. That's not what you do. You have to be <laughs> compassionate. Do I ya? don't know what you do about it. I don't know what you do because it's a weird thing, right? Some people can't help it because the, usually those, the people that can't help it have a mental, okay, now dis- you're getting into no, 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 shh, shh, shh. The, you, the people, <laughs> they can't help it because there's, there's, they have, they have a mental disorder or they've done so many drugs that they just aren't fit to be. You and, know, productive members of society. And they should be in a mental institution. There are others who... And I would pay tax dollars for that. Right. There are others who could work, who but can don't. work. And guess who the panhandlers are? The ones who can work. And that are driving Mercedes. The ones that... No, they are not. You don't... That's an assumption. You have no idea. <laughs> The ones that are mentally ill are chasing shadows on the sidewalk. I They're know. not asking you for change. No, seriously, think about it. The, the ones who are, are panhandling and people do people say, oh, have compassion for the homeless. The ones that are standing on the corner asking for your money are sane enough to say, we'll work, we'll work for food or whatever they put on their fucking sign. Right. Okay, here's one. Here's a guy. Here's a guy sitting at the corner, runs over to another guy who's going to hand him change. His cell phone Fell drops out of his, out of his pocket. pocket. Like, really, bro? You got a cell phone? You, do you live under a tarp? My point. My, my point is this. The ones that are mentally ill are literally chasing shadows down the street. They have no idea where they are. They're not asking you for change. The ones that are at panhandling, <laughs> they're trying to get out of working. Yes, That's what they're doing. You don't have to tell me. I know. I know. Uh, Stephanie says homeless fight club. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Remember that thing, bums fighting bums or whatever it was. Uh, uh, Friday kind of guy says we won't judge and everyone thinks about it would be better if homeless people weren't around. It's true. But what do you do about it? Uh, Stephanie Modell, uh, it's Friday kind of guy speaking to her says, I remember when I was a kid and there was a homeless person, he says bum, uh, fights on DVD. Yeah. It says, when I was working minimum wage, I would see homeless people smoking and uh, I, I don't know what he's saying there. Like can barely afford smokes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's an issue and and it's, I don't know the answer to it and I'm not going to go on and on about it, but. Wayne said he's bored of waking up early. I'm bored of that too, Wayne. Didn't I already say that? Did I miss that? I missed it. Maybe. She's trying to change the subject. That's what Mindy does when she's <laughs> bored of the subject. <laughs> Pay attention, folks. That's what uh, she does. <laughs> it's getting too hot. It's not, but it's true. Think about it. Really pay oh, attention. I know how true it is. That's why I said what I said. This is why I say to people, don't give them money. You're only promoting the You're behavior. You're paying for them to continue to do that. Yeah. I, if they can't keep getting money, they're going to keep doing it. I cringe more at people that give them money because I'm like, oh my God, they're just promoting it. If you want to give- If you don't have no money, you are forced. Now, I'm not talking about the mentally ill. It's true. But it, you will be forced to do something else besides panhandling. You will. And usually, like I said, the ones panhandling. Wayne said, okay, dinner time. Bye, I'll bye, listen back. Bye. 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 
Get your quotes. Give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> new beginnings, Jason. I chose a topic, new beginnings, because that is what we are trying to do. So the first one up is, and suddenly you just know it's time to start something new and trust the magic of beginnings. <clears throat> yep. Next one is wherever you go, no matter what the weather, always bring your sunshine. Ah, oh, nice. And sometimes the hardest thing and the right thing are the same thing. Dang, it's so hard to know too. Right? Sometimes you just got to make the choice. Oh, you, got, you, got the, you got a fifth? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> one more. <laughs> Your last one for tonight is sometimes painful things. No, I'm sorry. Sometimes painful endings bring the best new beginnings. It's pretty good, Mindy. Thank you very much. What were you going to say, Jason? Nothing. You are going to say something. Don't remember. Would you like me to repeat? <laughs> no. <laughs> well that was a fun podcast uh friday was saying whenever i do give food to them they get pissed or they say that it is that i that it when i give them like a bug or so. oh yeah okay they don't so want it basically they don't want it saying. yeah i've several times i've i've had situations like that it's very irritating yeah, it's a touchy, touchy, touchy subject. We don't like to see it on our streets. And it's not because we don't like to see people homeless on the streets. It's because they do, they ruin the streets. I mean, there's shit everywhere. Yeah. I mean, there's trash and shit everywhere. Literally and, shit. And it's just like, it's a bummer because you can ruin a beautiful city, a beautiful place with with that and they don't they just don't care they don't really care and we're supposed to have compassion for that i will say that the mentally ill absolutely have compassion for people hooked on drugs i absolutely have compassion for what i, what I would say to people that want to give money to homeless people or to give people panhandling that have that level of compassion keep it but give it to a shelter or a Com places that are trying to make facility it, places that are trying to make a difference yep. instead of giving the guy who wrote with a Sharpie who's got new Jordans <laughs> and a cell phone. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Uh, well, anyway, anything that's, else? That's all I got to say about it. <laughs> Uh, all right. Yeah, I do have something else. Uh, the difference between us will be live tomorrow. We are going to have some fun. I'm not yes. sure. We won't, we won't do two tomorrow. We'll probably do one and then get back on track with our normal schedule. We haven't uh, been with week. our little posse in a while. Yeah, we miss them. It'll be fun to hang with them boogers. I got a beer for, for David to try. It's a good hazy. I'm drinking it right now, and it's uh, very enjoyable. I think he would enjoy it. That's it for today's J&M show, though. If you'd like to listen to us live, you can do so on CastBox every Wednesday at 5.30 p.m., uh, and if you love what we do and want more of the things we do out of Low Tree Studios, visit our website, lowtreestudios.com. The links are provided in the show notes once we upload. Also, you'll see it in the little thing, a uh, little ID that we do live here on CastBox, lowtreestudios.com. Like I said, Difference Between Us will be live tomorrow at 6.30 p.m. And don't forget, bitches whining. The bitches will be back on Tuesday next week. Right, Stephanie? That's right. And Fine Tunings will be recording this week as well. Another podcast at the Low Tree Studios. Uh, and of course, all those shows can be found on your favorite podcatcher if you do not have the opportunity to enjoy us live. Uh, Bitches Wine doesn't do it live anymore, so you got to go on your favorite podcatcher. Well, maybe we will. Enjoy your evening, everyone, and thank you for listening to our show where we feature topics that serve as an informative and entertaining break from life's daily grind. We will talk to you later next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.